Hola! I am at 5 and this is a scrappy preview of Scythe from Stonemaier Games. Scythe is the latest game from designer Jamie Stegmaier, the mind behind Viticulture and Euphoria. Stegmaier has brought some really fresh stuff to the board gaming world and Scythe is no different. Scythe is a competitive action selection, territory control, resource management, unit combat, ability upgrade, and economic engine game. It takes place in an alternate history 1920s Europe when several unique factions compete for power and control across a depression era agrarian and steampunk industrial landscape using mechanized battle vehicles. You, as one of the five factions, will have a main character, workers, and up to four mechanized battle units on the board, as well as a unique ability. Your character, represented by a unique plastic miniature, is your first combat capable unit, but it is also the only unit you have that can engage in powerful random encounters across the map or discover new technologies at the factory in the middle of the board. Your mechs, represented by detailed plastic miniatures, can be used in combat or to transport your workers. You don't start with any on the board, but each one you deploy grants you a bonus. Most of these bonuses relate to movement, allowing you to traverse rivers or move further with a single action. A few will help you in combat. A lot of them are unique to your faction. The workers, represented by meeples, will produce food, wood, metal, oil, and additional workers depending on the terrain type they're sitting on. You'll spend food on recruits, which provide you with an immediate bonus, and a bonus when you or other players take an associated action. You'll spend wood on buildings, which provide location-based benefits. You'll spend metal on deploying mechs. And you'll spend oil on upgrading the efficiency of your various actions. All the while, you'll be collecting and spending money, popularity, combat power, and combat cards. Clearly, Scythe has a lot going on. It combines entire architectures of game mechanics that are usually enough all on their own to support the structure of a solid game. Scythe combines a passive resource farming framework with aggressive unit buildup and direct combat. Often, games that combine a lot of disparate mechanics end up clumsy and clunky. It's that classic multi-tool problem. If you combine a hammer and a screwdriver and a wrench, you'll most likely end up with a crappy version of all three. So by all accounts, the game should be mediocre at best. But Scythe appears to be one of those rare games that sets out with a dangerously ambitious goal and sticks the landing. This is mostly thanks to the action selection component of the game, which serves as a bit of an activity funnel. On your turn, you select one of four action spaces, never selecting the same one you picked on your previous turn. Each space offers two fairly simple actions, and you can perform one or both. Actions at the top of the space focus on moving units and gaining various resources, while those at the bottom of the space provide money, upgrades, and combat units at the cost of resources. By keeping your options limited but flexible, the game keeps things moving without getting overwhelming. The actions themselves are fairly small in scope. Move two units one space each, build one building, produce resources on two locations, spend money to buy some resources, build a mechanized unit, etc. This keeps the action of the game flowing. And although the factions sport differing upgrades, resource costs, starting locations, and even upper and lower action space combinations, you can mostly focus on what you want to focus on provided you know the game well enough to get your engine running in the right direction. Either way, you can only do the same thing to a limited degree. There are finite limits to how many workers, mechanized units, recruits, and buildings you can create, as well as how many upgrades you can make, how much military power you can amass, and how popular your faction can become. The benefits of rushing down a particular aspect of the game quickly result in diminished returns on future use of that action space. An ideal strategy appears to be one that paces most production to cap out around the same time, ideally forcing the game to an end exactly when you're ready for it and your opponents aren't. In fact, the game's end trigger is exactly the kind of elastic player-controlled close that can make for an exciting climax. Throughout the game, as factions meet certain requirements, they gain stars, not too unlike video game achievements or trophies. Possible achievements include maxing out your military power or popularity, deploying all four of your mechs, getting all of your workers on the board, completing one of your two secret objectives, winning your first and second battle, and more. The game ends the absolute instant that a player completes their sixth achievement. Each achievement is ultimately worth coins. Once the game ends, you combine coins on hand with coins per achievement, per territory you control, and per resource you possess. The player with the most coins wins. And while the first player to hit six achievements certainly has an advantage, popularity plays a very important role in the final calculation. 
If you aren't well liked, your achievements can amount to as little as three coins apiece, and your territories can amount to as little as two coins apiece. If you are well liked, your achievements can be worth twice as much, and your territories can be worth two and a half times as much. This means a balanced approach can easily compete with a rush strategy, which isn't always the case in games designed with this level of complexity. That said, the game includes one very direct way in which you can muddle and ruin your opponent's strategy. Combat. When a combat happens, players secretly bid an amount of combat power, using a combination of power from a resource track and combat cards with values on them. The player that bids the most wins the combat. Ties go to the aggressor. As simple as combat resolution is, there's a lot at play when combat occurs. The building resources a player buys or produces rest on territories that player controls. If another player runs him or her off that space, those resources now belong to the victor. Movement is required to get into combat, and it is mostly incremental and can easily telegraph your intentions if you aren't careful. Running off opposing workers costs you popularity. And finally, the first two battles you win are worth one achievement each. Whoever loses doesn't remove their pieces from the board, which is a blessing many other games don't give you, but all of your units on the lost territory do move all the way back to your home space, which can set your movement and production back a few steps. This makes each combat really, really important. So while you may not want to overspend to win, you almost never want to risk losing. Altogether, Scythe seems to be a game capable of fulfilling a space that I have yet to see filled well. It really seems to meet an otherwise non-existent mark between Euro-style farming and American-style combat board gaming. If you like either, it's certainly worth a shot. If you like both, it definitely is. Boop, <laughs> boop,